So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where Russia has a civil war. Now, as we all know, Russia is the largest country in the world, and it has been for some time, even when it was the Soviet Union. And it also houses a lot of different cultures within it, a lot of different language groups. But being the largest country in the world, that is going to come no matter what. But what if Russia had a civil war? Now, politically, this country is very, uh, I guess you can say authoritarian the elections that take place in russia aren't necessarily free and fair you know compared to the united states where that is usually free and fair russia they use scare tactics sometimes we saw that when donetsk and luhansk were annexed by russia but what would this civil war look like if you guys enjoy this mapping scenario make sure to leave a like on it subscribe to the channel if you're new if you want to see more war scenario mapping scenario content like this and let's go ahead and jump straight into the video now because the elections are i don't want to say, i don't want to say they're rigged but since they are influenced it's hard to tell where a i guess a revolution or a rebellion group would appear and when i was looking at the most recent elections i saw that this area over here here was a different color than this area and this was the only area which was a different color so this area over here and this area were the same color but this one was red and these guys were blue the problem is i don't think many people live here so yeah this scenario is going to be pretty fictional in terms of the rebel groups that pop up and you know what they're fighting for and what they support but let's go ahead and outline them so over here in the east this is where we're going to start off we have a ginormous piece of russia breaking up that includes siberia in parts of southeastern russia these guys are the pro-chinese faction they want a world world attack one attack all alliance with china and other eastern allies in order to counter nato and their aggressive expansion as we know in real life the russian government does not have that kind of relationship with china in fact it is sort of straining china is going towards a more neutral ish kind of stance although they are still like pro-russian they're not pro-us but they're not pro-russian they're kind of like like if we're looking at it like a, a spinometer right here's the us here's russia china is like right here so they're not fully but they're they're almost there but they're leaning more towards that middle point if you know what i mean anyway the next rebel group that's popping up here is going to be a pro-western group now there seems to be one of these in every single video and i'm not too sure why maybe it just has something to do with the current ideologies in the world but this group is probably going to be a big threat to russia as they border along well nato and they're also super duper close to uh moscow which is russia's capital somewhere in there this group is also going to have a lot of strategic land as a lot of russia's population is within this area for our third and final group we have a bunch of communists uh showing up it, it cannot be a russian civil war without there being a couple of communist groups all right so now everybody is colored in and i've chosen not to include Crimea or South Ossetia or Abkhazia in this video because it is likely that Ukraine and Georgia would seize those territories during a Russian civil war as Russia would be too busy fighting itself. It also isn't too far-fetched to believe that NATO would start making moves such as grabbing Kaliningrad but for now I've just gone ahead and included them in the Western Rebellion. I didn't really explain the Western and communist governments but I think you guys can grasp that by yourself. I mean those, those are pretty self-explanatory movements. All right but first of all we have the Western group making the first move here as they invade up into southern russia now, this area is pretty vital because you know you want to have this closer to that just in case there's anything important over here so they are slowly moving up and they finally get what they need and establish a straight up front line right here so now their goal is to obviously get the moscow that's where they want to go because that's where the government is and if they take out the russian government then they likely win the war so they start a little invasion out here from here although it goes well at first eventually it is stalemated and stopped as russia is able to hold them off now elsewhere russia is going to be in big trouble because these two groups out here are in the freaking middle of nowhere like there's little to nobody out here and uh there's not much importance i mean along the southern border here there's some towns and cities and stuff but up here it's cold and nobody wants to live there so it isn't too far-fetched to believe that the eastern group here would be able just to take all this without any resistance from russia and you know the communists are very good at war for some reason so they're gonna go ahead and just cut russia and the two we have a front line existing between the communist and the pro-chinese groups now if you know anything about east asia you'll know that there are a lot of communist countries over here specifically four north korea china Laos, and wait vietnam i I don't know how I forgot Vietnam. That is 80% uh, of the world's communist countries. So obviously East Asia has an obsession with communism or something like that. So it wouldn't be too far-fetched to believe that this group right here 
is pro-communist. I mean, they are pro-China and China's communist, so they probably are communist. However, these are a different time of communist. They are communist communist. In fact, they're Soviet communist. So despite the fact that they share an ideology, they're going to fight each other. The communists are also very notorious for fighting themselves. So yeah, it's a whole lot of back and forth here. Now, uh, it's important to note that the purple team is literally in the smack dab middle of freaking nowhere. It's literally colder than my freezer here. So I don't know if they're going to have that many supplies to really exist. But I think this also brings us to an interesting point of the video. Who is supporting who? Obviously, the Chinese are going to support the pro-Chinese group up here, despite the fact that they hold relations with the Russian government. Now, North Korea is going to do the same thing here. They support the uh, the Chinese whatever they are here now other countries will obviously have different opinions for example over here in europe pretty much all of these countries are going to support the western group i've chosen to color in all of the eastern european countries here that would have been affected by the soviets or i guess communism back when it was a thing but i have chosen to leave some out such as serbia and hungary and that's because they are more i would think they are more pro-russian government than they are pro-western government that's just kind of how it is in real life right now also obviously belarus is pro-russian and then serbia is as well hungary though they're the weird ones and then turkey i think would be neutral in this scenario turkey's been very neutral in real life although recently they have been going more pro-western so that's interesting however i don't think they would fully support a western rebellion i think they would just go neutral but georgia though yeah screw russia they're 100 pro-western some other countries that are most likely pro-russian include iran include india maybe kazakhstan but that's a big maybe and as far as who supports these guys nobody does but yeah they get fucking decimated so with the purple rebellion out of the war now russia can focus on more important Important things such as not dying oh yeah have i mentioned the u.s is supporting the western rebellion in russia i mean come on now really you think they're just gonna like take a seat on this one and watch it happen no of course not they're gonna be supplying the freak out of these western groups because they don't rush want russia to exist anymore if russia's gone the united states is literally close to unstoppable china might have a thing or two to say about that however recently china and the u.s have been kind of getting better on relations so maybe you know it's just like a co-prosperity group where they just freaking dominate the world who knows anyway back to the front lines in russia over here a lot of russian troops went this way in order to fight off these guys so now the western group can go ahead and kind of do some expansion for some odd reason they find themselves sticking to the northern region where it's very cold we'll unlock this plot point later in the video however for now they are doing very well here in the south though not so bueno uh the russians they realize the importance of the southern area here and if i can click the right color that'd be great but they're gonna go ahead and push back the western group here and even start to invade into its own territory meanwhile over here the green group keeps doing its thing as it edges closer and closer to mainland russia but if you do recall what i just said a lot of russian troops are over here so uh you know comparing the green troops to the blue troops yeah they're also going to get decimated yes china is aiding them however it's not like they're sending troops to them i mean they're sending equipment probably not a lot of it because they don't want to piss russia off too much should they win this war but they're still sending equipment to them so it's like uh let's take a canadian troop right you know the canadian military it's not horrible, but like when you compare it to Russia or the US, it's not great. But if you give that Canadian soldier all the stuff that US has, then obviously they're going to be better. They're not going to be to the same level as the US, but they will be better. That's what's happening over here with the green guys. Anyway, back over here to uh, this part of Europe, Russia. Oh man, they are not doing too great now, are they? Sure, they push back the commies, but then again, there's more commies over here they're, they're actually not commies but they're liberal wait a minute russia is fighting itself whoa 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 hold on now i just had the sudden realization that russia a right-leaning country is fighting off three left-leaning rebellions obviously this means that leftism is a not good ideology right or maybe it's a fact that authoritarianism is a horrible ideology and what russia is doing right now for a government isn't going to work in the long run because eventually uh if you keep the same guy around for too long he ends up with a little bit of a disease called bullet my head disease not great it's not going to be me by the way i'm not saying that please don't kill me russian government i, I just swear to god it's not going to be me i'm just saying i'm just stating what history shows okay if you're listening to me right now see that then please don't kill me so back to the western group over here in russia they are continuing to do extremely well in these colder areas and now russia is in trouble because they are now north and west of moscow if you don't know where moscow is then i don't either but i think it's around right here i mean i know where the proximity of it is which is with the red circle i don't know if it's right there or maybe it's over here or up there or down here it's somewhere over here but the red team is now technically above it and to the west of it now they do have a lot of fighting to do before they get even closer but you know it's capable it can happen and also not to mention, they are also south of Moscow. Although this is very far away, so I really wouldn't consider that as much of a threat. But should the red team be able to kind of invade down to Kazakhstan, then uh, Russia is most likely going to lose this war. 
I don't know why I said when. And it's already been discovered that the red team and the green team have made an agreement. Should the Russian government fall, they will agree to split Russia in half. Now, the Western government, they want basically just this part of Russia where everyone lives. The green government, they just want where China is because they're little communist friends, pals buddies. So with that in mind, they begin to work together. The green team puts up a better defense and eventually they go on to offense as Russia is forced to move troops around in order to counter the ginormous western invasion. This eventually leads to the green team taking back this part of communist Russia. So now Russia is condensed and they're a little bit backed into a quarter here and uh, whenever someone gets backed into a corner they're they're bound to use all their strength in order to push back now since I do this in every scenario I'm not doing it here Russia is screwed troops are starting to get angry with the Russian government and they're starting to more so support a, uh, a peace deal here however unfortunately for them these two groups here they're not looking for a peace deal they're looking for complete control so the western group pushes the Russians out of their territory and from here they launch a massive invasion towards Moscow thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of troops die in this push it is one of the second largest <laughs> uh invasions toward moscow in history i think germany holds that record maybe poland does i don't know now that troops are just outside of moscow they begin to push in from all sides also i can go ahead and get rid of this red dot i think you guys know where it's at eventually that front line consolidates into one and the battle of moscow begins in the official battle of moscow here we have a little something like this happening in the yellow we have the city and around it we have the city gates but i'm not going to keep that colored in from the north we have a more consolidated front line happening and eventually we have something like this happening in the moscow area a battalion from the north is sent down towards the city and they fight off a large number of russian national guard eventually they are stopped and they can no longer i forgot the word advance that's the word advance is the word now we have another battalion moving in this time with a lot more troops in it and they reach the gates of moscow but are unable to take the city as the russian national guard is able to hold them off however if this other group were to get here then they would easily be able to take the city and from there win the war now what they don't know is that a large number of troops that are being pulled over here from this front have finally arrived towards moscow so with that in mind we have a very large pushback in this area in fact moscow is considered safe by the russian government for now however if we zoom out from the city or i guess it's approximate location we see that down here in the south we have the red team going ahead and getting right under the city and this poses a huge threat for moscow however the plot point is about to be revealed as it is now known that nato troops are actively helping out the western rebellion here they believe that russia is screwed they don't believe that they can win this war at all and with that they think it is justified for them to go ahead and send their troops into russia in order for them to stabilize russia and to help out the civilians but by that they mean they just want to finish this war off and support the western government so now with this knowledge and with the troops actively being on the front line russia is done for remember how they were invading the cold areas up here yeah that was the finnish battalion what about the expertise invasion of this southern area that was all ukraine hell even georgia helped out and they're not even in nato so now zoom me back into the battle of moscow here we see that these battalions are once again going to reach out we have a lot of fighting taking place over here between the northern and western point however it is uh useless because the nato troops are going to obviously dominate the russian troops in this case so now moscow is almost completely surrounded in fact let's go ahead and just completely surround it as the city and its surrounding area is encircled now from here the rest of these groups they're going to continue onward and make sure that moscow will not ever be taken back now that the city is isolated and about a million russian troops are within it we were on five million nato troops surrounding the city and of course with the help of the western rebellion a battalion goes in from the north one in from the east and one in from the south and also one in from the west and now the battle of moscow is taking place newsflash they're screwed so moscow is captured by western forces and with this portions of russia start to surrender as their local governments realize that this war is uh well lost the last remaining sector surrenders over to the communists which creates a pretty big dispute with the western government however they do still agree to meet for peace all right so taking a look at this peace treaty here it's uh well it's pretty simple we have eastern russia and western russia being created now they could very possibly have different names although i don't know if russia or i guess western russia would want to completely rebrand to something new east russia that is more likely maybe they're like big siberia republic or something like that i love china republic communism republic soviet union i don't know anyway russia over here they are now pro-western and they've gone ahead hey i just hear the weirdest sound behind me sounded like a weird like dripping i don't know that was weird i don't like that as i was saying before i was interrupted by the apparent alien behind me uh they have agreed to release all their release release all their claims back to the countries of which they have stolen from or i guess 
reclaimed from depending on where you're from and what you believe they've given crimea back to ukraine and they've given the south ossetia and abkhazia back to georgia and any and all disputes with any nato countries have been solved as for this russia they're basically the same russia but communist so yeah i guess some things never change they might be a huge country but they are also very lowly populated. And looking at those rankings, the United States is now the second largest country in the world, right behind Canada, then China, and then I think India, or no, not India, uh, Australia or Brazil, or maybe just this Russia, because this is still very big. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. So if you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you're new. All of the support is very appreciated you guys know this i say this every single freaking video in fact i'm thinking about changing my script because i just hate being repetitive i really hate being repetitive but yep support love it great for us and uh yeah um i think recently no i know recently that we just had that time capsule post be released on the community post section and that is awesome i don't know why but that kind of stuff is just really cool to me i love like looking back on where i was and looking at where i am now that's called progress um progress is a cool thing but yeah uh i made another one so that will go up in a year i think this is going to be a tradition now so uh yeah i'm going to try my best to forget about that even though now that i've just said it in the video i probably won't forget about it because honestly i forgot about the last one and i was a day late reacting to it so it's now kind of messed up a little bit because now it's not exactly a year it's a year in one day that doesn't matter though because i'll probably forget about that too anyway once again thank you guys so much for watching i'm on vacation right now i'm almost done and i'll see you guys in the next video and of course, thank you to all the super fans. This includes Patrick Clauser, Yo Moma Moma, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Kylie Speaks Plays, Poland Country Ball, Dimitri, DW Cool Dude, Nevada Garbage Trucks, Yakko, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.